Is God trying to send a message to the people of Israel? Rumors say that the unspoken name of God, the name which observant Jews cannot say, appears on the eastern wall of the Temple Mount. The towering sealed Golden Gate of Jerusalem is more than just a physical landmark. It is connected to ancient mystery, intertwining faith, history, and prophecy. Since the 16th century, fulfilling Ezekiel's prophecy, the eastern gate of Jerusalem has stayed closed and will remain shut until the Messianic Prince's prophesied second coming. According to Jewish tradition, the Messiah will enter Jerusalem through this gate. But now, the gate stands open and stirs imagination and hope. Does this signify the Messiah's arrival? Will ancient prophecies be realized, heralding a new era of redemption? Could its opening signify a spiritual awakening unfolding in our time? Join us as we delve into the gate that was sealed until Jesus' coming has just opened up. The Golden Gate Promise Jerusalem is an ancient city that holds countless historical stories and incredible importance to many people. The Eastern Gate is located on the eastern wall of the old city of Jerusalem. The Eastern Gate leads to the Temple Mount and faces the Mount of Olives, the Eastern Gate was destroyed by the Romans at the time of the destruction of the Temple in 70 AD. It is regarded as a holy site by the world's three major religions. Each year, pilgrims from all three faiths travel to the Old City to see this wall and its magnificent Eastern Gate. The beautiful Gate of Mercy is the only gate on the eastern side of the Temple Mount. It is one of only two of the ancient gates that offered entrance from the eastern side into the old city of Jerusalem. It has been consistently walled since medieval times, fulfilling the prophecy recorded in Ezekiel, where the Lord reveals to Ezekiel that the eastern gate will be closed and will not be reopened until Jesus' second coming. The gate was sealed. The old city of Jerusalem is surrounded by a wall containing eight major gates. Moving counterclockwise from the northernmost gate are Herod's Gate, the Damascus Gate, the New Gate, the Jaffa Gate, Zion Gate, the Dung Gate, the Eastern Gate, and the Lion's Gate. The Eastern Gate, facing the Mount of Olives across the Kidron Valley, is unique in that it is completely sealed shut. In Hebrew, it is the Gate of Mercy. It is currently the oldest gate in the Old City, having been constructed in the 6th or 7th century AD. Also, it is the gate that gives the most direct access to the Temple Mount. If a person could pass through the arches of the Eastern Gate, he would be very close to where the Jewish Temple used to stand. When Jesus entered Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives in Matthew 21, he used the gate in the same location as the current Eastern or Golden Gate. According to Jewish tradition, the Messiah will enter through this gate riding on a white donkey. Since the time of the destruction of the temple, the Jews come to the wall to pray for the rebuilding of the temple and the eastern gate. The rock, which is located inside the dome of the rock shrine, is believed to be the location where Abraham came to sacrifice his son Isaac. This is located just to the left of the gate on the temple mount. Many years ago, sages foretold that its tale would be nothing short of extraordinary, stirring anticipation in the hearts of millions eagerly awaiting its unveiling. This gate, nestled in the heart of Jerusalem, serves not only as a physical barrier, but also as a symbol laden with profound messages, evoking sentiments of goodwill and divine intervention. For ages, it has stood closed, its enigmatic narrative prompting soul-searching inquiries into the annals of history and the tenets of faith. Why many pondered, does tradition dictate that only one, recognized by Christians as Jesus, may pass through its threshold? To unravel the mysteries veiled by this closed portal, one must first delve into its historical context. This is none other than the Eastern Gate of Jerusalem, known also as the Golden Gate, an ancient sentinel with deep significance in the city's defense and the spiritual fabric of its inhabitants. But what prompted its closure and by whose decree? This query leads us back to the 16th century, to the reign of Sultan Suleiman, a formidable figure within the Ottoman Empire. 
who chose to seal the gate. Yet, this act transcended mere fortification. It resonated with the beliefs and prophecies cherished by diverse communities, Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. For Christians, the closure of the gate signified the fulfillment of prophecy, validating the sacred texts and foreshadowing events to come, a belief deeply ingrained in Christian doctrine. Thus, the significance of this event transcends the confines of history. It serves as a nexus between past predictions and present beliefs, bridging the gap between the physical realm and the spiritual domain. The prophecy, as penned in the book of Ezekiel 44.13, speaks of a gate ordained by the Lord to remain shut, reserved solely for the passage of the prince. For Christians, this prince is none other than Jesus Christ, embodying the culmination of salvation's narrative. Thus, the connection between Jesus and the sealed eastern gate assumes paramount importance in Christian theology, underscoring his indispensable role as the mediator between humanity and the divine. In Christian belief, Jesus emerges as the embodiment of ancient prophecies, the fulfillment of spiritual truths foretold through the ages. As Ezekiel's words attest, the closed gate assumes profound significance in the narrative of Jesus' life, symbolizing the exclusive path to salvation, a truth echoed in the teachings of the Bible and the New Testament. Thus, the closure of the gate transcends the confines of temporal history. It serves as a potent symbol of Christian faith, affirming Jesus' singular role as the conduit to divine grace, this symbolism gains further resonance in anticipation of Jesus' return, a moment heralded by many as the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan and the establishment of His eternal kingdom. Across the annals of time, this gate has borne witness to pivotal events, its significance reverberating through the epochs. Beyond its physical form, it embodies the covenant between humanity and the divine, a testament to God's promise and the fervent expectations of believers. Standing before the majestic golden gate, shrouded in mystery and steeped in prophecy, its sealed entrance whispered ancient secrets and untold tales. What lies beyond this mysterious gate? What truths does it hold? Are we ready for what happens when it is opened? Opening to the holy city, the old city of Jerusalem is encircled by a formidable wall boasting eight principal gates. Positioned facing the Mount of Olives, the eastern gate holds particular significance as it remains closed, believed to date back to around 520 AD. It is commonly referred to as the Golden Gate in Christian stories and as Sha'ar Harachamim, meaning the Gate of Mercy in Hebrew. This gate is notable for its direct path to the former location of the Jewish temple. Each of the two doors within this dual gate structure bears its distinct name. The southern one is known as Bab al-Rahma, which means the Gat of Mercy, while the northern one is referred to as Bab al tauba meaning the Gat of Repentance. Additionally, it is also known by another Arabic appellation, the Gate of Eternal Life. In the Mishnah, Midat 1.3, the eastern gate of the second temple compound is identified as the Shushan Gate. If it is presumed that the Golden Gate occupies the location of the Shushan Gate, this would imply its status as the oldest among the current gates within Jerusalem's old city walls. While Jewish and Christian tradition ascribes its construction to King Solomon, there is no archaeological or historical evidence to support such antiquity. The modern Hebrew designation for the Golden Gate is Sha'ar Harachamim. Jews historically congregated near this gate, desiring proximity to the holiest site. However, in 1541, the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman ordered its closure. Presently, the gate's exterior appearance reflects a sealed double entrance leading to two vaulted halls. Situated on the northern section of the eastern wall of the Temple Mount, it is believed to have been built upon the remains of its predecessor. The construction of the current wall occurred across various periods, starting with Hezekiah's reign, followed by phases during Zerubbabel's era, the Hasmonean rule, and notably, the Herodian period. 
Scholars speculate that the current Golden Gate possibly emerged during the 7th-8th century AD under the Umayyad Caliphate, although debates persist regarding its exact chronology. References from antiquity, such as Josephus' account in Antiquities of the Jews and the Mishnah, provide insights into earlier gate structures and their functions. The debate over the gate's construction continues, with conflicting theories ranging from the Byzantine to the Umayyad period. Archaeological insights from Dutch scholar Lien Rittmeyer suggest the presence of older gate posts within the structure, potentially dating back to the First Temple period. Additionally, historical accounts detail the gate's role during the Second Temple era, as well as its adaptations during the Ottoman period, including repurposing as a watchtower. During the Ottoman period, a small mosque was initially constructed near the Golden Gate to accommodate brick burners. However, in the 19th century, the Sultan ordered the destruction of this mosque and a section of the gate's wall to make space for renovations. Subsequently, two new arches and a new wall were added to the western interior of the gate. Modifications over time, such as the addition of arches and alterations to the gatehouse's interior, reflect the evolving architectural landscape of Jerusalem. Beneath the surface, remnants of ancient architecture hint at a lower original ground level, underscoring the city's rich historical stratification. The Golden Gate. Within the confines of the Al-Aqsa enclave rests a rectangular stonework edifice, adorned with two intricately designed facades. Unlike its counterparts within the Al-Aqsa compound, the eastern facade juts out two meters beyond the wall, deviating from the typical construction. This gate consists of two passages, clearly delineated in its layout and primary elevations. The lower level hosts a vaulted hall, bisected by four columns, creating two aisles that lead to the Door of Mercy, known as Bab al-Rahma, and the Door of Repentance, Bab al tauba Ascending to the upper floor, one encounters a chamber crowned by two roof domes, while three pairs of domes span the passages below. Initially, the eastern facade boasted two expansive doorways, each flanked by a column measuring 3.90 meters wide, embellished with semi-circular arches and decorative friezes. Regrettably, these entrances were sealed off during the Ottoman era. The ornamentation adorning the Golden Gate shares resemblances with motifs found in other structures across the Levant region. Beyond its grand openings lies a rectangular vestibule cronid by a Dumed sailing, measuring 20-37 meters in length and 10.50 meters in width. Originally adorned with six shallow elliptical domes, this space was later modified to feature only two. These domes are supported by elliptical arches springing from two pilasters at the entrances and two central columns. The deliberate architectural projection of the façade, extending two meters from the wall, serves as a defining feature, signaling its precise location within the complex. Central to inquiries surrounding the gate is the enigmatic motive behind its design and construction, blocking the Messiah's path. The gate known as the Golden Gate has a rich history of being opened and closed multiple times. It was initially closed by Muslims in 810, then reopened by Crusaders in 1102. However, Saladin sealed it shut again in 1187 after reclaiming Jerusalem. Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent undertook its rebuilding along with the city walls but sealed them shut in 1541, and they have remained closed ever since. While Suleiman's decision may have been for defensive purposes, Jewish tradition holds that this gate is destined to be the entrance for the Messiah. The walls and gates of Jerusalem have experienced numerous cycles of destruction and reconstruction, with the eastern gate being the oldest and retaining its original location. Interestingly, during Suleiman the Magnificent's reconstruction efforts from AD 1539-1542, the eastern gate remained untouched. Monolithic stones in the wall, dated back to the 6th century BC and attributed to Nehemiah's time, attest to its ancient origins. 
There's speculation that Suleiman sealed the Golden Gate to prevent a false messiah, or antichrist, from entering, particularly as Muslims consider Jesus of Nazareth to be the messiah. The Ottomans even erected a cemetery before the gate to thwart any false precursor to the messiah, such as Elijah, from passing through. This belief is rooted in the idea that Elijah, according to Islamic teaching, is a descendant of Aaron, thus a priest or Kohen. While there's a notion that a Jewish Kohen cannot enter a cemetery, it's not entirely accurate, as certain halakha permits entry to specific cemeteries as long as purity regulations are observed. In 2003, Israeli authorities closed the entrance to the Golden Gate on Temple Mount due to its management being linked to Hamas. The gate has remained shut to prevent unauthorized construction work by the Islamic Waqf, which Israeli officials believe has caused damage to ancient artifacts during periods of Jewish presence. In February 2019, the gate's interior was reopened for Muslim worshippers from Temple Mount, but the gate itself remains closed. The prophecy. The sealing of the gate isn't merely a historical footnote. It's deeply intertwined with biblical prophecy, particularly in the Christian tradition. The prophecy originates from the book of Ezekiel 44.1.3, where the prophet Ezekiel speaks of a gate to be kept shut because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it. The Golden Gate was found in the East Wall of Jerusalem and represents strong prophetic evidence for the authenticity of the Bible. The Eastern Gate was just one of 11 entry gates into the city. According to this prophecy, the gate is to remain sealed, only to be opened for the prince. In Christian belief, this prince is understood to be Jesus Christ, symbolizing his unique role in salvation history. Nevertheless, Ezekiel prophesied the shutting of this gate itself around 600 BC that it would be shut because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. In 1541, Suleiman blocked the eastern gate aligning with the prophecy in Ezekiel. Despite being a Muslim, Suleiman fulfilled the prophecy made 2133 years earlier. Attempts to open the gate faced resistance. During the Six-Day War, some Jewish military members considered blowing open the sealed gate, but an Orthodox Jewish leader opposed it, asserting that the Eastern Gate can be opened only when the Messiah comes. In 1917, Muslim leaders aimed to break the prophecy by demolishing the gate. Remarkably, the city passed from Muslim to British control on the planned day. Jewish rabbis anticipate the Messiah as a divine military leader sent from the east. The prophecy suggests he will enter through the eastern gate, liberating the city. To prevent this, Muslims sealed the gate and placed a cemetery in front of it, thinking a rabbi would avoid defiling himself by crossing it. Unknowingly, they fulfilled the prophecy in their actions. In Acts 2, Peter quotes Joel 2.28.32 to illustrate the events of that day, applying a prophecy that can only be fulfilled after the second coming of Christ. This usage raises questions regarding the Golden Gate and Ezekiel 44.1.2. The Holy Spirit allowed Peter's use of Joel under scriptural inspiration, but no statement by Jesus on the Eastern Gate exists. If we consider the Golden Gate a foretaste of the future Eastern Gate, it would rely solely on historical experience, needing more scriptural support using the definition of foretaste as something indicating what is to come, we can cautiously view the Golden Gate as foreshadowing. However, this interpretation should align with the unchangeable Word of God and not solely rely on historical experience. The Golden Gate may foreshadow God's work during the Millennial Kingdom as long as it remains shut through miraculous circumstances. However, Conclusions should be grounded in the clear statements of Scripture. Some commentaries mention a popular belief about the Golden Gate, associating it with Ezekiel's prophecy. However, biblical expositors clarify that the gate mentioned by Ezekiel is the Temple Gate, not the present-day Golden Gate. There are various legends and traditions, including an old Jewish tradition linking the sealed gate to the return of the Shekinah in the Messianic age. The Golden Gate is viewed as a symbol, 
potentially shadowing the future east gate of the Millennial Temple due to its location and centuries-long closure. Jewish tradition holds that the Messiah will use the eastern gate to enter Jerusalem. Sultan Suleiman, a Muslim, attempted to prevent the Messiah's arrival by sealing the eastern gate with 16 feet of cement nearly 500 years ago. The sealing of the eastern gate in Jerusalem has captured the attention of prophecy students or believers. Ezekiel's book mentions a gate facing east multiple times. In Ezekiel 10, 18, 19, the glory of the Lord leaves the temple through the east gate, moving to the Mount of Olives as written in Ezekiel 11:23. Later, the glory returns to the temple through the gate facing east in Ezekiel 43, 1, 5. Ezekiel 44.1.2 describes the gate being closed, signifying that no one can enter because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it. Ezekiel 46.12 states that a prince can use the eastern gate for offerings. Some interpret these passages as references to Jesus Christ. The triumphant entry into the temple represents the glory of the Lord as seen in Ezekiel 43.2, Matthew 21.1.11. The command to permanently shut the gate is seen as a prediction of its sealing by Muslims in A.D. 1540. The prince to whom the gate will open, Ezekiel 46.12, is believed to be Christ at his second coming, entering Jerusalem through the reopened eastern gate on the Mount of Olives, Zechariah 14.4. This interpretation sparks speculation about the future unsealing of the eastern gate. Jesus and the Sealed Gate Expanding upon our investigation into the prophecy and its historical realization is the correlation between Jesus and the sealed Eastern Gate. This association stands as a cornerstone in comprehending the profound depths of the prophecy and its implications in Christian theology. Within Christian doctrine, Jesus Christ is not merely perceived as the culmination of Old Testament prophecies, but also as the embodiment of the spiritual verities these prophecies encapsulate. The sealed gate, as prophesied by Ezekiel, assumes a profound significance within the narrative of Jesus' life and mission. It serves as a symbol of the exclusive path to salvation that Jesus embodies, a notion echoed in the New Testament, particularly in John 14, 6, where Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hence, the sealing of the gate transcends its historical occurrence to become a symbolic representation of the Christian belief in Jesus as the sole intermediary between humanity and God. This symbolism gains further depth with the anticipation of Jesus' second coming. The sealed gate is perceived as awaiting its ultimate opening by Jesus himself, an event that many Christians anticipate as the realization of God's plan for salvation and the definitive establishment of His kingdom. It is imperative to grasp the broader historical and theological implications of the sealed gate to fully appreciate its significance. The Significance of the Golden Gate In bygone eras, during the rule of Muslims over the revered territory of Bayt al-Maqdis, Certain figures, such as Ubada ibn al-Samit, associated the eastern wall of the area with the concept of the last day. While Ibn Kathir clarifies that this wall isn't explicitly referenced in the Quranic verse, so a wall will be put up between them. With a gate therein, in 5713, it has been used metaphorically by some commentators to elucidate the verse's meaning. Consequently, this analogy likely inspired Muslims to intercede for their deceased just beyond the eastern wall of the Al-Aqsa area. The appellation Al-Rahma possibly implies its presence since the gate's inception, suggesting a link to a broader concept associated with the place, particularly the rock, akin to that of the last day. It can be inferred that Bab Al-Rahma symbolizes a gateway to paradise or an avenue to mercy, as noted by Rat Route. Regardless of the initial purpose behind the construction of Bab al-Rahma, it was erected during the early Islamic period and stands as the most significant gate in the area. According to Jewish tradition, the Shekinah, or Divine Presence, 
was believed to manifest through the Eastern Gate and is expected to reappear upon the arrival of the Anointed One, the Messiah, as referenced in Ezekiel 44, 1-3, when a new gate will replace the existing one. This belief might explain why Jews historically prayed for mercy at the former gate's location, especially during the Crusader period when access to the city containing the Western Wall was restricted, hence the moniker Gate of Mercy. In Christian apocryphal texts, the gate serves as the backdrop for the meeting between Mary's parents, elevating it to a symbol of the Immaculate Conception of Mary and a recurring motif in depictions of the life of the Virgin. While some equate it with the beautiful gate mentioned in Acts 3, others contest this identification, attributing the confusion to linguistic nuances between Latin and Greek. Tradition suggests that Jesus, fulfilling Jewish prophecy, entered through this gate on Palm Sunday, symbolizing the Messiah's arrival. The Gospel accounts differ slightly, with the Synoptic Gospels indicating a direct route from the Mount of Olives to the Temple Mount, while the Gospel of John implies observation from the Temple Mount. The gate holds spiritual significance for those interpreting Ezekiel's prophecy metaphorically. For Muslims, the gate, known as Bab al-Dahabi or Bab al-Zahabi, represents the Golden Gate or the Gate of Eternal Life, reflecting its religious importance in Islamic eschatology. Muslims believe it to be the site of Allah's final judgment and the future resurrection. Given the profound significance attributed to the Golden Gate across the three Abrahamic religions regarding past and future messianic events, it remains a historically rich and contentious site in Jerusalem. Following Jewish and Christian traditions, medieval Christian artists depicted the meeting of Jesus' grandparents at the Golden Gate, symbolizing purity in marital relations. This symbolism extended to the tradition of carrying the bride across the threshold, while artistic representations often conveyed the concept of the Immaculate Conception. The metaphorical significance of crossing the threshold is echoed in Pope John Paul II's Theology of the Body, addressing contemporary challenges faced by Roman Catholic believers. The threshold symbolizes the transition between earthly and heavenly realms, embodying the mystical body of the Church as the Bride of Christ. Additionally, the gate's orientation towards the East aligns with Christian beliefs about Christ's resurrection and the Second Coming. Christian sanctuaries typically face East, reflecting the symbolism of the sunrise on Easter Sunday and Christ's anticipated return. Moreover, City gates in Christian communities often contain religious artifacts for protection and blessing. For instance, the Ostra Brahma in Vilnius, Lithuania, houses an icon revered by both Roman Catholic and Orthodox adherents. In Christian writings, the Golden Gate holds significance as the meeting place of Mary's parents after the Annunciation, symbolizing the virgin birth of Jesus. Non-canonical texts also attribute messianic importance to Jesus' entry through this gate on Palm Sunday. In essence, the sealed eastern gate of Jerusalem transcends its physical structure, encapsulating a multifaceted narrative intertwining history, prophecy, and faith. Historically and theologically, this gate occupies a prominent position in the cityscape, witnessing pivotal events and serving as a symbol that transcends its material form. Despite being sealed for centuries, it remains a testament to the enduring connection between the earthly and the divine, captivating the hearts and minds of believers from diverse religious backgrounds. Thanks for watching. Check out another interesting video by clicking on the link appearing on your screen right now. See you on the other side.